Hey guys, it's Sasha. Pinterest reported their Q2 results last night, and the truth is, it was a mixed bag. There were some really good and encouraging numbers, and there were some updates that were not good at all. But a mixed bag is taken as very good news these days, so Pinterest is up a whopping 19% in pre-market trading. In this video, I will cover the most important points from these results and the earnings call, share some of the insight and analysis on Pinterest stock that goes beyond the headline numbers. I'll tell you the good and the bad, and I'll share my valuation with you. And by the way, my valuation has dropped considerably, and I'm going to explain why. But before we jump right in, remember that I am not your financial advisor. I am just a random guy on YouTube sharing my analysis, my insight, and my opinion. So please take it for what it is. I don't make predictions on what the Pinterest share price will do or when it will do it. I just share my analysis of the company. So let's look at the Q2 results. Revenue in Q2 was $665.9 million, which was 8.6% up on the same quarter in 2021. The costs have gone up substantially, clocking in at over $700 million compared to $542 million a year ago, so Pinterest booked a loss of $43 million in Q2 as a result. The really important bit in these results is how Pinterest made that revenue, because it's a story of two halves. If you look at the presentation slides, you will notice one thing right away. Okay, you will notice two things. The first thing you'll notice is the garish design, because until Q3 last year, Pinterest had pretty normal looking investor slides with normal colors using their brand shade of red. But then in Q4, they must have hired an intern with a penchant for design, and we got this first garish red and blue look back in January. Then after being told off, I'm presuming, the intern went and copied the Facebook color scheme in April. And now we're in Q2, the intern went back to the Q4 results and changed it from the red and blue color scheme to green and beige. It is particularly obvious because the intern forgot to update the name of the report and it still says Q4 2021 as the title. Anyway, my first half of the revenue story is about the monthly active users. Like all other social media platforms, Pinterest saw a huge increase in users during the pandemic and immediately after the pandemic, and then in 2020, to where we find ourselves today after a two-year boost, they are seeing their numbers drop. You can see the global user numbers fell by 5%, and the US and Canada users who make up most of Pinterest's earnings dropped by 8% year on year. And that does not look good because these numbers have been dropping for two quarters already. Analyzing the user numbers was made harder because Pinterest changed the regional split in their reporting two quarters ago. They used to have two segments, US and the rest of the world. And now they have US plus Canada, Europe, and the rest of the world minus Europe. But I made a rough stab at comparing the before and after, and you can see that the rest of the world numbers are trending in the right direction. There was this blip that went upwards briefly, but overall it all kind of looks good. The concern is this graph of US and Canada, where you added a fixed uplift of 9.5% to the old US only numbers to account for Canada. And the issue here is that the US numbers were roughly the same based on this, or even maybe lower in Q2 this year compared to Q2 in 2019. And the trend is definitely a concern for anyone who's a shareholder. Up until last quarter, Pinterest used to give you an update on the latest user numbers as of the time when the earnings call was happening, so a few weeks after the end of the quarter, so you got some insight into where the numbers were headed. But from this quarter, they have stopped reporting it. They actually said that they would stop on the last earnings call, I think. And this is because this should be the last quarter when the negative effects of the lapping effect of the pandemic quarters are being felt. And you can see this lapping effect in the numbers here. Q4 2019 grew by 26% and Q4 2020 grew by 37%. So two big quarters. And so Q4 2021 declined by 6% year on year. Then Q1 2020 grew by 26%, Q1 2021 grew by 30%, and Q1 2022 dipped by 9%. In Q2 2020, Pinterest saw a huge bump with 39% year on year growth. Then in Q2 2021, we were still not coming out of the pandemic and they posted a 9% year on year growth lower but still positive. And then in Q2 this year, the numbers dipped by 5%. But if you look at the numbers for Q3, in 2020, Q3 by 37%, which was 
was a lot, but in 2021, Q3 only grew by 1%. By the way, you can see that the analysts were forecasting a share price of $84 for 12 months time, just before the user numbers started dipping in Q2 last year. Roughly the same as the $80 share price that it was at the time. And then the share price collapsed right after those Q2 earnings and continued dropping all the way down to $20. And interestingly enough, those same analysts now have, now after that's happened, a $20 price target for 12 months from now. They were only 300% out a year ago, so make up your own mind as to how good Wall Street is at making stock predictions. And it will be very interesting to see what happens to those projections when the growth comes back. By the way, I have an affiliate link for Simply Wall Street in the description that gives you a free 14-day unlimited trial of the platform. It's pretty cool as a tool that gives you a very visual, very different kind of way to look at company data that is a little bit easier in the eyes. Loads of analysis on the share price, the earnings, etc. And here's the financial health section for Pinterest, which looks pretty good when you have a mountain of cash and absolutely no debt. More on that in a second. If you want to get that 14-day free trial to check it out, use my link in the description. So this is the tipping point where we start comparing quarters going to much weaker quarters from a year ago rather than comparing them to relatively strong quarters instead. So hopefully this decline for Pinterest is going to flatline in the next quarter or two and the growth should maybe come back after that. User numbers are definitely the key number to keep an eye on in the next few earnings scores. One big warning flag is that Pinterest guidance says that revenue will grow by mid single figures year on year for Q3. And revenue in Q3 last year was $633 million. If mid single digits is 5%, that means the revenue in Q3 is forecast to be $665 million. So basically exactly the same as it was in Q2. But if ad rates grow in the next quarter like they did last year and like you would expect, that must mean that Pinterest is forecasting another decline in user numbers if the total revenue stays flat. So just be a little bit cautious because there is a risk that the analysts won't like that very much if that does happen. The good news though is that the average revenue per user is growing and it's growing very strongly. It grew by 20% year on year in the US and Canada, 20% in Europe, and this is including the strength of the dollar affecting those numbers from Europe, and it's up 80% in the rest of the world, which is a ridiculous number. By the way, for the massive geeks out there, here is a really cool example of the Simpsons paradox, because you can see that the average increase across all markets is 17% even though that is the average of three numbers, the 20%, 20%, and the 80%, which are all higher than 17%. And this is because the split between the geographies, between the number of people in the US and the number of people in the rest of the world, is different now compared to a year ago, and that's what's causing that paradox. But anyway, these charts, is where the opportunity is for Pinterest. Pinterest makes 10 cents per user in the rest of the world, which is 2% of what US users make for Pinterest. But the rest of the world makes up 223 million users, which is 54% of Pinterest total. So 54% of Pinterest users are currently basically earning next to nothing. And that next to nothing is now starting to kind of grow somewhere. Pinterest have recently been introducing loads of new ad formats. There is a push on video content. And then the shareholder letter, it says, finally, we've expanded our ad offering to more countries. In Q2, we launched ads in Japan. And in July, we expanded our Latin American presence to Chile, Argentina, and Colombia. So ads in Japan have only just launched in Q2. And the three countries in South America were added at the beginning of Q3. So we haven't seen them come through in the numbers yet. It sounds like there are still probably a lot of other countries in the rest of the world segment where there is no ad revenue at all. So this is very, very early days of building up that ad revenue, which is good if you're an investor and shareholder because that should help the numbers in the future. And this is definitely where the biggest opportunity sits. If we look at the same numbers for Facebook, Facebook makes $50 per user in the US and Canada, so about nine times as much as Pinterest. But look at the Asia Pacific and rest of the world segments. $4.54 and $3.35 compared to just 10 cents. So 33 to 45 times as much money per user. And Pinterest should in theory command extremely strong ad revenues. Some would argue that maybe they should command stronger ad revenues than Facebook because the user base is considerably warmer to spending money. Pinterest is literally a visual shopping list. People are ready to buy things when they are on Pinterest. Two really important things happened 
with Pinterest in the last quarter. The first is that an activist investing company called Elliott Investment Management bought over 9% of the company to become its largest shareholder. It's not clear at the moment what the intent is because a buyout at this price would not be a good deal for the shareholders in my opinion, even if there is a 40% or whatever premium slapped on top on the shares. And this is because the share price has collapsed so much over the last few months. But a buyout is also not likely because the fund only has $55 billion under management. So buying Pinterest at a premium would use up over half of the fund's total value at the current share price. And if the share price was to go up, it would probably be impossible. The other important thing was the acquisition of Yes. Yes is some kind of online shopping platform that only launched their app in May 2020. And the website only came online in July 2021. So it wasn't even a year old by the time they got bought. I'm not sure what the value is there, but that acquisition only cost them $86 million. So that leaves $2.7 billion worth of cash and marketable securities lying around. And by the way, Pinterest balance sheet is insane. Go and look at it. $1.6 billion in cash, $1 billion in marketable securities, and $511 million in accounts receivable. So about $3.2 billion worth of cash and quasi-cash. And they added $333 million worth of cash from operating activities in the last quarter. Pinterest is a cash printing machine. And this company has no debt whatsoever and $558 million in total liabilities. This is about as good a balance sheet as they come. So let's dive into my valuation. By the way, I share updates on my valuations with my patrons and channel members as and when I make them rather than whenever I happen to make the YouTube videos. Some of my valuations don't even make it into YouTube videos. So join my Patreon if you want to get into that conversation, into the discussion, and I share all of my models, including this one, with my team members. So if you want to dig deeper into to the numbers you can do. So I have reduced my assumptions on growth given what we're seeing in the numbers, and I'm assuming user numbers are flat at the end of the year. I then have a moderate rate of growth in 2023 and a slightly higher rate of growth on users in 2024, although these numbers are still significantly lower than what Pinterest was doing right up until the whole COVID thing happened and the last few quarters happened. I am projecting revenue per user to grow to a fraction of what Facebook makes today over the next six years. US revenue goes to $17 compared to $50 something dollars for Facebook. The rest of the world only hits $1.23. And remember, Facebook was earning $3.30 to $4.40 on those customers. And I've also increased all of the costs at the same time because they have been trending up. Even though the management was talking about managing those costs down on the earnings call, I'm just trying to take the conservative approach here. And with that in mind, using a 10% discount rate, a 5% perpetual growth model, and 22 times EBITDA multiple in 2027, because because I still think that they're going to be growing quite substantially at that point, I get a target price of $54 to $69. I think the company is going to be very much in the growth phase still in six years' time at the end of 2027, so I am going to stay near that EBITDA multiple and stick a $65 price target on Pinterest. This is a massive drop from the valuations that I've had over the last couple of years that sat in the $85 to $100 range. And this is primarily down to the worsening economic outlook and the much more conservative assumptions that I fed into the model because of the potential recession, inflation, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada. I have increased costs substantially for the company because of inflationary pressures, because of the numbers we've been seeing in Q2 and in Q1 to a degree. And I have dropped growth projections considerably as well, far below where you would probably expect them to be given the data that we saw before the pandemic. And maybe it's pushing a little bit too far. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. But even at $65, that is still a ridiculous 225% upside as I'm recording this video. So I'm keeping my position in Pinterest and I will be adding to it as and when I am able to. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you guys later.